Welcome to Electron Line. The second special case is when one of the lines actually has not a real slope. It has an infinite slope. Does that matter? Well, actually, it doesn't. It may look strange when you first see the equations. Notice our first equation simply says x equals 4. And when we graph that equation, it's simply a vertical line on the xy plane. The second equation is uh, an equation that we're more familiar with. It is in the format of y equals mx plus b. So when we change the equation into this form, we can clearly say that it has a slope of one third and an intercept at minus two. And you can see that those two lines do indeed intersect one another. So therefore, there must be a solution. You may first look at that and go, what do I do with it? But actually, we solve it in the exact same way. It's already put into a format that makes it easy for us to solve because we have the variable x already defined in our first equation, and all we have to do is substitute that into our second equation and see what happens. So that means that we take 3y is equal to, instead of x, we replace it with the number 4, 4 minus 6, and we then solve this for y. So now we get 3y is equal to negative 2, divide both sides by 3, and we get y equals negative 2 thirds. So what that means is that the location of where the two lines intersect, the value for y is equal to negative 2 thirds. And then you say, well, what is the value for x? Well, it turns out the value for x is already defined because everywhere x is equal to 4, and it's where those two lines then cross. That would be the value, your x and y value, is equal to x is equal to 4, and y is equal to negative 2 thirds. And that is how we solve an equation or a system of linear equations like this. So the reason I plugged this up in here is because I want to show you that the equation 3y equals x minus 6 can be converted into the regular slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This makes it easier to graph. So the question is, if you have an equation where you have x equals 4, which in essence has an infinite slope, how do you graph an equation like that? So that's a good, that's a good question. So let's plug in, let's draw the uh, xy plane again. And we have the equation x equals 4. So we want to find all the points where that is true. So when we mark this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, we definitely realize that this point right there, x is equal to 4. But what other points have the value x equals 4? Well, it would be any point that falls on this line right here. Notice that it doesn't matter what the y value is, and there's no restriction on the y value, but every point on this line here, and of course, if I make that look a little bit more like a line, there we go, every point on that line has the value x equals 4. So this one would be, for example, 4 and 1. This point here would be 4 and 0. This point right here would be 4 and 2. Here that would be 4 and 3. And this point right here would be 4 and 4. The point over here would be, let's say, 4 and negative 2. That should be a comma. There we go. So you can see that every point on that line has the value x equals 4. The y value can be anything, and so that's what this represents. It represents a line where every point on the line has the value for x equals 4. And so that is the same line that we drew over there. Good point. We have a similar situation. We could have an equation that is defined as, let me put on the x and y axis, we have y equals 1, for example, so that would be this point right here. There, the point would be 1, 0, but you can have a point over here, which is 1, negative 2. You can have a point over here, which is 1, 3. Notice, again, it creates a line where every point on that line has... Whoa, wait a minute. Let me try this again. <laughs> I got this all reversed. 
it's y equals 1, not x equals 1. So that means that this here would be, for example, negative 2 and 1. This point right here would be the point 0 and 1. And over here would be the point 3 and 1. 1 is the second coordinate. So you can see that for every point in this line, the value for y equals 1. And x can be any value. And that is line is defined by simply telling us what the value for y has to be with no restriction for the value of x. And that is how that's done. So if you have a system equation that involves that, you would not have um, like the equation of half and that equation, the system equation of y equals one third. Yes, if you want to draw that, so that, that line looks something like this. And again, there would be a point where the two would intersect. Yeah. And then you, you find the x by plugging it in. And then if you solve these simultaneously, so if you take this equation right here, and you find this equation, and you solve those simultaneously, then you plug in the value for y equals 1. So that means that you end up with something like this. So instead of y, you write y equals 1. So you end up with 1 is equal to 1 third x minus 2. And then you would multiply both sides by 3. So you multiply this one by 3, and multiply this one by 3. So you get 3 is equal to 1x minus 6. Move the negative 6 over, so you get 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. So x equals 9 would be the point right there. So that point would be x, well, I didn't quite draw it to scale, of course. But that point right here would be the point 9 comma 1. And that's how you would solve for that. That's correct. So, those are the two special cases. Should write infinite slope itself, vertical line? confusing for me too. So, a vertical line, yeah, by definition. So, when you have something that says vertical line, that is synonymous to infinite slope. Horizontal lines have zero slope. That's right. So a horizontal line. Slope is equal to zero. Is equal to zero slope. It's synonymous to zero slope. And that can actually be easily seen because if you have the equation y equals mx plus b, and you let m equal zero, and m equals 0 to indicate 0 slope, then you end up with y equals 0x plus b, or simply y equals b. So anytime you have y equals a number without the x, like in here, that indicates it's a 0 slope. It's obvious now that when you're first learning it, it's kind of weird. Right, it looks weird. Okay.